I can't wait. I don't know if you know this, but Liz's daughter. It, did we say this yet? We did. We okay. I was just like, <laughs> am I supposed to launch out on this? Yeah. So Liz's daughter is going to make you a, a bitty. A bitta. A bitta. A bitty? <laughs> I'm trying to remember what you said. Bitta. B-I-D-A-H. Instead okay. of granny. Right. Because who wants to be called exactly. granny when you're as young as we are? Exactly. So here's <laughs> little Dreshen Jr. who wasn't going to wait for mama or papa. Nope. She was like, oh, it's time. And so daddy gets into the car, puts mom into the car. They're driving down there. She's like, now, now, we got to get there now. He's going down wrong way roads. He's running through stoplights. By the time they get to the hospital, the baby was already in the back seat with mama. Right. I, she didn't need anybody, Birth evidently. In the car. Can you imagine? Oh. Like, I'm just glad they didn't name him Lexus or Mercury yeah, or Ford really. or something yeah. like that. Yeah, broke down Sprint. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But he's Prius. the Pri- <laughs> Prius. I had a Geo Metro. Did you? Did you? Geo- uh, but he's a junior. Yes. So Dreshen's a junior. Yes, so congratulations Dreshen. to the family. I'm yeah. glad there was no ticket. Right. And he was two weeks early. Yeah, that yeah. was on top of that, too. Crazy. Mm-hmm. And I guess the second child, and so from what I understand, uh, the second child comes a lot quicker Evidently. than the first <laughs> child. <laughs> so he was just like, hey, y'all, I'm here. Evidently. So I can't wait to see, you know, Taylor. I know. Where is the baby going to make it to the hospital? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just she's, putting that out she's there. She's already going, yeah, it's going to be fine, yeah. Dempsey. His morning crew. She's 12 years old, she's from the Carolinas, and she won this huge competition over a car seat. It's pretty cool. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. On Zoom with us this morning, it is Lydia Denton. I'm so glad you're with us, Lydia. You got up so early on a summer day to spend some time with us. We're so grateful. Yeah, well, she came up with, she entered a contest, right, Lydia? Yes, I did. Tell us about that contest. Like, where did you see the advertisement for the contest? Well, since my mom's a science teacher, she loves to engage with students. So she loves to enter all types of competitions. Mm -hmm. So on Facebook and when she searches out fun science competitions, she gets all of these results. And we saw the sick of feeling education one. And we had an idea. And it sounded like something very fun to do. So we decided we should enter. And so you had seen your inspiration was that you had seen some children that were being injured and passing away because they were being left in hot cars, right? Yes. And it it just was very sad for me because it was a problem in the world that could be fixed. And it isn't just neglectful parents. It's something very tragic, and I wanted to fix it. And you did fix it. I mean, you came together, and you developed a car seat that does what? Well, the car seat has, well, it helps protect kids from being and dying in hot cars uh, from being left in them. So what happens is there's a pressure pad, and once a baby over five pounds is placed on the car seat, it turns on the whole system because it's inspired the pressure pad. And then it continuously measures the temperature around the car seat. And if it gets over 102 degrees, then it will text the parent saying, the car seat's getting really hot. You need to come and try to save the baby. And if they don't come within a minute to reset it with the reset button, then it will automatically call 911 with the GPS location of the car seat. That is so crazy that you came up with this. How long did it take you to develop it? Well, it took about two years. Mm -hmm. Um, It, it, well, we had to figure out how to build it Mm -hmm. and what needed to go into it. Then we actually had to execute that, which took the longest time because it was just trial and error. And you had to look up what you needed to do, how to connect things. We had to order things off of Amazon and try to get things so we could actually build it and be able to make this amazing invention that could save lives. And then it's going into production, we hope, sometime soon. Do you know anything about that? 
Uh, well, we are working with a mentor, um, me, my brother, and my sister, because after we entered it into the contest, they came together with me to help improve the car seat. Mm -hmm. And so we are seeing a mentor, and he's helping us better the invention by trying to replace some parts with more reliable parts. And he's also helping us try to get a patent or a license for the car seat. How amazing is that? And you won a big sum of money. How much? $20,000. What are you doing with it? Well, we're saving most of it for college. And since my brother and my sister, after we entered the contest, helped with it, I thought it would be really nice to split the money with them. And we each got to go on a $100 spending spree. But the rest is going away for college and helping uh, the car seat getting better and other inventions to come. Good for you. That's amazing. What'd you get with your hundred bucks? Well, I bought myself a smartphone because my old one was pretty much a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and you needed a new phone anyway to maybe keep all your notes for your next invention, right? Yes, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> She's like, give me just a second to breathe, lady. <laughs> Lydia, you are amazing. We are so proud of you. You have inspired so many people. and so glad that you spent some time with us on His Radio this morning. His Morning Crew. So here's a family. They decided we're going to move. And here's what they're moving into. It's about 1,300 feet long and 980 feet wide. Kind of tiny, wouldn't you think? And it's an entire Island. island. <laughs> An island. That's an island. And they're moving to an island away from their little comfy home that they live in now. Yeah, but the Seath family said this is where we have vacationed for years and years and years. And it's called the Seychelles Islands. It's in the Indian Ocean um, off the coast of Africa. Um, and their coral reef system is just falling apart. It's corroding. And so they're going down there to start a foundation, start a charity to try to help this coral reef system um, flourish again. They're going to start a coral reef farm. I've never heard of that. Yeah. There's only one other one, I guess, in the entire world or something or in that area, but... That sounds like the cool... It's almost like Swiss Family Robinson, only, only they're not going to be stranded. No, exactly. <laughs> they're Everybody's there gonna, on purpose. <laughs> exactly. Everybody's going to know where they are, but they had gone snorkeling in that area and they saw it firsthand, you know, what it's supposed to look like and then what it actually looked like. And uh, they just as a family, very passionate about it. Yeah, it's mom, dad, and their two young daughters. Yeah. I don't even think the oldest is a teenager yet. No, looks maybe 11 or 12 years old. Yeah, so maybe 8 and 11, the two girls, and then yeah. mom and dad, and they're moving to the island yeah. to stay there and do what they're going to do with the coral reef system. crazy? And when I was looking at this article, I was looking at this area of the world, absolutely beautiful. Can oh, yeah. you imagine growing up like that yeah i hope they get some social interaction i'm, I'm sure, sure they, they will yeah i'm sure they will they started like a uh, gofundme page and I, it's going to cost about thirty one thousand dollars to start this farm Ooh. yeah but i think i think they'll be able to do it i think they're, they're going to try to drum up tourism and all that other stuff because what corona has done yeah to the planet right exactly. literally yeah but it's um, like 115 islands that are there together. So they're all little teeny tiny islands like this. I've never been, obviously, <laughs> anywhere in the well, world like that. Have you? Oh, uh, well, I've been to Florida. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Keys, maybe, and that's about it. But one of these little islands and then to set up shop and live there is Just very, like very that. cool. Yeah, good, good for them. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. I just have to know. What does this really smell like? It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. If you're looking for a new scent, there is a new perfume that will be coming out possibly soon. It's called um, Oda Space. Space. Evidently, it smells like space. How did, how do, how, what, I don't know. what does space smell like? <laughs> okay, so some of the astronauts have said that it smells like metal, um, it smells clean. It smells like seared steak. And another one says raspberries. How do you mix all that into one? It almost sounds like a machine shop. A, a little bit with with fresh fruit in that machine shop. That's okay. all I can think. Um, and so, yes, there are several astronauts that have um, lent their 
expertise to this campaign. It's a Kickstarter campaign. Okay. So they're trying to raise money, and they say they can't put it on sale until they have a minimum order quantity that they meet. What is it? I don't know what the minimum order... Like, I tried to find in the research how many do we have to order. Couldn't find that out. Um, But they have raised, like... $400,000 $400,000 or something like that. That so sounds far. like the quota to me. It, it sounds to me like they For kinda... Ode to Space. Ode to if, Space. So if you if if you want to smell like space. Yeah. Yeah. Just put this on. Yeah. And is this evidently it must be to these astronauts a great smell it if they're going to put it into a perfume. Yeah. I, I don't know, but what I do like about this whole Kickstarter campaign and once the perfume actually goes on sale is they're going to give a portion of it to STEM programs in the schools okay. to, to, so they can um, inspire future scientists So that's, and mathematicians. So that's pretty cool. I like okay. that. And engineers. I don't know what that means, but... If... <laughs> Isn't it science, math? I'm I'm so gonna show my. Oh, thank you. There okay. You go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought it was yeah. something else for a second. Science, technology, engineering, math. That that that's We're a winner go to with me. It, yeah. yeah, works for me. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I spend some time on TikTok. I love Bunny the dog. Have you ever heard of Bunny the dog? No, not Bunny the dog. My wife. Oh, there's one out of Michigan that she follows on Instagram. I can't remember the name of it. Just makes her day so much better. Yeah. Yeah. She's always watching this dog. So yours is on TikTok TikTok and it's Bunny. Yes. And she's a, I'm going to call her a shootle because she's a sheepdog poodle mix. Okay. And even her owner's like, I don't even know what to call her. So I came up with shootle. Shootle. Okay, it works. Yeah, Bunny the shootle. She is awesome. Bunny is the smartest dog I think I've ever seen in my life. So what she does on TikTok, her her parents have made these buttons. And the only way I can describe them is, remember the Staples Easy Button? Yes. And you would pop it and it kind of clicked a little bit. Okay, so they have made these buttons that say different words. That Bunny, like one is potty, one is outside. So Bunny goes over to all of these buttons that are on the floor and they're kind of color coded. I don't know if Bunny can tell the difference of the colors, but she has learned what each of the buttons stands for. Okay, she's showing me pictures and there's like, Good night. There must be 50 buttons. Exactly. And like I say, they're they're color-coded, and I, I don't know what each of the color-coding means inside the house or eating or whatever, but there's one of the TikTok videos where Bunny wants to do something with her owner, and it kind of sounds like this is what happens. More look upstairs. Okay, let's go upstairs. Let's go upstairs now. Upstairs now. That's crazy. She wants to go upstairs now. And they're going upstairs. Wait, so in, in essence, she <laughs> listen they're, to that. Huh? That's some heavy foot, feet that that dog <laughs> know, has. Right? It sounds like she's taught the dog how to talk. Yes. How to communicate. Communicate to go outside. She wants to eat, go upstairs. And when she goes upstairs, the owner then has to figure out, okay, what is it she wants upstairs? So she takes her out like on the deck. It looks like they might live in Seattle or something. And she's just looking at at the ocean or the river or the whatever the sound where they are so nice it's i'm like i can't get ace <laughs> to do anything i want him to do what kind of dog is ace he's a pomeranian okay and he's super intelligent like he's super intelligent the uh-huh. dog knows when he's he's done bad things but i don't know if i also have the patience that bunny's owner to has. train to yes. do that but they said hmm. she, when they first brought bunny home they would hit the outside button Immediately take her outside. When they came inside, like they would hit the inside button. And that's how they started training her. Well, that's smart. So it's just repetitive. Just yes. have to do it all the time. Yeah, she's on TikTok. I am Bunny. His morning crew. Okay, we found some activities to do in case you're like, I just need to do something. COVID-19 has destroyed my summer. You don't have to allow it to destroy your summer. Yeah, Not we can't all. do some of the normal things. Yep. That we're used to during the summer break when their kids are out of school. So we posted on our blog, hisradio.com. Just click on Rob and Liz when you get there. And you'll see on our blog that we put down about 15 activities that you can do. Practical things Mm -hmm. that are just so simple and so easy. I won't go through the full laundry list for you, but I'll name a couple that we do have on there. Like, for instance, uh, game night. Mm -hmm. Simple enough to have a game night that you can do. One thing my family takes advantage of is hiking. 
Yes, getting outside. You can get to a national park. Yep. You can get to uh, you can get to a state park, possibly. And something I have not done is cook or bake with a family. Oh, okay, because that is so much fun. I can see Liz's family doing this because yeah. she's the hostess of the Ugly Bakery. <laughs> That's right. We have done like sugar cookies in the past. Yeah. Uh, volunteer to deliver groceries to the elderly neighbors. I love that that's on the list because it's I I think it's probably not something that we've thought of doing with the entire family. Very good to do. Here here's a thought. Yeah. Get in the backyard when it's dark. Uh-huh. Flashlights. And don't use your phone. Use a real flashlight right. and play flashlight tag. That is so much. <gasps> you if now if you have like really cool neighbors, yeah. you could play through the whole neighborhood. That would Flashlight be so cool. tag. How about catching fireflies and then releasing them again? We did that when we were out in the mountains oh, just a couple of days that's ago. That's cool. That was so much yeah. fun. And then grilling in your backyard or at a park that's close by. Yeah. If you get don't you have out a grill, of the house and sure. doing something, right? Just a change of scenery, break up the monotony and the boredom. Or you can also do this what? have a backyard movie. You can do that. How can you do that, Rob Dempsey? <laughs> wow, shall we act? Sure. Why, Liz? <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Summer Fun Fridays. I text in the keyword summer. You do that, and then yeah. you could win. I'm Literally, you could win a movie projector with a screen, popcorn, and a tabletop popcorn, popcorn maker. Popcorn maker, yeah. And some excursions as well to get away with the family. Yeah, and we're doing that every week. So text that word yeah. Friday. No, not Friday. Summer. summer. <laughs> Hello. You can text Friday, see what happens. But text summer to 800 447 7234, and you could possibly win that. We're going to do this for five weeks. It's going to be so much fun. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. You like Cheerios? I Yeah, I kind of do. They're low on cholesterol. Yeah, do you like just the plain ones or do you go for it the depends. honey nut? Or? Oh, the plain ones. Yeah. yeah have I have multi- to have the plain ones. They have a multigrain one that's really good. I yeah, think. but multigrain is not whole grain. Uh, right, And so exactly. they have a lot. Of, you don't know what the multigrain in yeah. the multigrain could actually yeah. be. Why are you asking me about healthy cereal? Because if you put them in a food processor or a blender, you can make your own sand. I know you like playing the sand Wait. on your... This sounds like something you could do for, like, kids or something. Yes. If you have little kids and you don't want them, I don't know, maybe you have to do indoor projects, that kind of thing. You can't You don't have a big yard or, or whatever. Well, toddlers put everything in their mouths. Yes. And so if you're making your sand out of Cheerios, that's okay. Edible sand. Yeah. I used to eat mud pies when I was a kid. Do you remember doing that? That's what happened to you. Yeah, was really what happened. <laughs> For but, me, it was paint chips. <laughs> paint chips, yes. Okay. <laughs> but if you do it with the Cheerios, don't word to the wise, one mom to another. And it didn't say this in the article that I read. Don't use Honey Nut Cheerios or because they're going to get real sticky. Oh, that makes sense because all the sugary stuff on top of it. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, or the frosted ones or the what the colored ones. They have ones. chocolate ones. Yes, yeah. or the peanut butter ones. Just But here's what I did think because, so you put it in the food processor and you grind it up, you're going to need quite a few boxes, I think. If you, have an, if you have a baby, you're fine. If you have a toddler, you might need more sand. And when you pulverize those things, you just get a little bit. That would be interesting to see what a full box of cereal, what kind of... Yeah sand it would produce i would guess no more than a couple of cups i would guess i think you're right yeah because it's just dust at that point so let me ask you this Mm. say you do this Mm -hmm. and your toddler gets used to eating the sand and you not doing anything about it what happens when you bring that baby to the beach well, and there's real sand that they start shoving in their mouth thinking it's going to taste like these cheerios sand at home i think one bite in even a baby is going to know there's something different here. That's Yeah, that's, there's something wrong. Mornings with Rob and Liz. She's an abalupla, and she is loved and adored. She's a what now? Oh, I don't know how to say the word. <laughs> I just tried. It's Rob and Liz on his radio. She's an abuelita, and I think... That's what did I say. I have no idea. In my mind, it that's was, what I said. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I got well, this down. Out here in the real world, you really didn't. <laughs> and that's Mexi- Mexican for what? Uh, grandmother. And I talked to my daughter yesterday because I wanted to get the correct pron- pronunciation. So hopefully I got it right. But anyway, she said, abuela, which I knew this, is the term for grandmother, right? Okay. Abuelita is a little more familiar. So it would be like instead of mother, which is proper, formal, you would say mama or mommy. Oh, okay. Okay. So instead of grandma, it'd be bitter. 
Exactly. That's <laughs> what Liz wants to be called when she's a grandmother. Right. It's going to be a little more familiar. Well, Donna Angela is our abuelita, and she is amazing. She's a Mexican grandmother. She has her own YouTube channel. And she Wait has- a minute. This is that young, well, I'd say young lady. This is that grandma that is like, isn't it like a stone kind of background, and she's doing all this cooking? Yes. I don't know what in the world she's saying. No, no. But- because I don't know Spanish, right? But it looks like amazing. It is amazing. This is her outdoor stove oven type deal, like almost like a grill type thing, and she hosts uh, cooking demonstrations and recipes like every week. She has three million followers. That's crazy cool. I know, and I don't know what she's cooking up, but I'm like, if she can cook in this manner and make it amazing, which I'm sure it is. How come I can't do half the? Th- I mean, on your, I, on I your can bake. big technology exactly. kitchen you have, yeah. yeah. I mean, and all of us like, I I can sort of cook, I can bake, I can sort of cook, mm-hmm. but she's out in the backyard basically, just rustic tools making it happen. It's fantastic. That's crazy cool. Yeah, and she doesn't have like a, a video crew. She doesn't have a sound guy that's filming all of this. It's her granddaughter with her phone. Yeah, it sounds like she's off in the background when she talks. Yes, exactly, because she's not using earbuds. <laughs> AirPods, sorry. <laughs> but she's so cute, and she makes flan. She makes tortillas, and I don't even know what she's all the rest. So how do you follow along if you're trying to cook this stuff? um, I know that in some of the YouTubes that I saw, there were translations. um, So you could follow along to like captions at the bottom of the screen. So you can read along what she's saying. Okay. Exactly. Um, And she's making what looks like delicious meals every single week. And it's just, she and her granddaughter are getting closer (laughs) because they're hosting a YouTube channel. That's great. Three million followers. That's absolutely amazing. I know. And you can't email her. She doesn't email her, do anything like that. Really? <laughs> uh-uh. But she's a YouTuber. Yep, she cooks. <laughs> Rob and Liz. His morning crew. You got to give it to this doctor, this mm-hmm. pediatrician that has such a super huge heart. It's Rob and Liz on his radio. Good morning. Good morning. She is a pediatrician, and her name is Dr. Avita Edge from Oklahoma, and she was treating a couple of kids, and she kind of learned their story as pediatricians do. They find out the background. Um, so they were foster kids, and they lived with some elderly foster parents, um, and so the chance for adoption for them and and the foster parents were really you know very transparent about it probably not going to be able to adopt them because of our age because they were elderly so anyway you know she treats them for a couple of years i guess and then um the foster parents called her and said can we meet and she said immediately in her brain she thought they want me to take those children and she said i love those kids But she had to weigh out, you know, everything, the pros and cons, if she was going to be able to do it. When they met, they did ask her, would you be willing to take them? No way. Yeah. That was pretty bold to ask the doctor to do that. I guess, Mm. you know, they picked up on the rapport and the kids really loved her and they made this bond and this relationship. Evidently, she loved them. Oh, yeah. You could tell. Yeah. yeah. She said, oh, the the boy, 10 years old, just the sweetest thing. And then, of course, she got to know the sister. So she fostered them for a little while. The doctor did? Yeah. Okay. And then decided, yeah, I'm going to adopt it, huh? them. Yeah, these are my babies. And so uh, they just were adopted on May 11th. So they've been in her care as her children for the last, you know, month and a half. Adopted during COVID-19. Yep. Look in the at middle that. of it all. I just think it's it's amazing. And the doctor even said, you know, when things like that happen, like as soon as they called, she knew what they were going to ask. She said, that's a God thing right there. It is. Yeah. She just knew in her heart of hearts. Yep. It was from the beginning of time. Now they have a forever home and she has forever. Been. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Kind of go through the memory bank of your life when you were a kid. And if you were a school bus rider, mm-hmm. maybe there was that cool school bus driver. Yeah. It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. Preston had one of them. Mm-hmm. He loved his school bus driver. Yeah. He was 14 when he met Val. Val is a 70-year-old school bus driver, like a father of four. He's got tons of grandkids. He's from Haiti. Um, and Preston just, the first day, he gets on the bus and Val says, hey, good buddy. And from <laughs> then on, 
They were buds. They were real good buddies <laughs> yeah. the whole time. And so this whole COVID thing happens. And, of mm-hmm. course, Val has no job because right. there's no kids to bring to school because yeah. school's closed down. Yeah. Well, in comes Kristen Bell. Mm-hmm. And Kristen Bell does this Facebook post, I mean, uh, Instagram post. Yeah. And she's talking about Ving. Yeah. Which I had no idea Ving was a thing. I didn't know either. <laughs> it's about it's about giving. Yeah. And so she helps out teenagers, mm-hmm. high school students mm-hmm. primarily, help give $1,000 to somebody who's really impacted their life. Yeah, they sort of have to put together a presentation, if you will. I don't know if it's um, like PowerPoint or anything like that. But uh, So Preston put together something, sent it to Ving, sent it to Kristen Bell, and they looked over, loved the story, and so they got in touch with Preston. Then they went to find Val, and they gave him a thousand dollars. Isn't that cool? Yeah. There's even a picture of Preston with the big check. You know those big <laughs> cardboard checks. Yep. And it's got Val's name on it, and yep. it has the thousand dollars on it. And Val's like completely taken back. Of He's course. like, really? Somebody thought of me? And went to those steps to make sure that I knew I was loved and cared for. And he said, you know, driving a bus doesn't pay a whole lot of money. He said, but the kids are worth it. Val is an amazing man. 70 years old, loves those kids. His morning crew. If you like Legos and if you like Home Alone, <laughs> you're in because now Legos has made a Home Alone set. And get this Seinfeld as well. I would be totally into the Home Alone. Oh, man, the Home Alone, I mean, you you remember, it's the 1990 classic, and Uh they've got that old home, so you can recreate the old home. Which was humongous. It was, yeah. It was was one of those ones that you dream of being in, right? And Home Alone. The thing is, 3,000 pieces to build the McAllister family iconic suburban Chicago home. And then it has like Kevin McAllister. Does it have? It's got all the him? kids in it. Does it? Yeah. The whole family. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, and and it includes Kevin and Harv and Marv. Okay. Yeah. You've right. got the rope scene the that's there with the paint cans and the spider in the picture and Buzz's wolf, including the girl when he does the wolf to the girlfriend. Oh, right. right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Buzz, your girlfriend, wolf. wolf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's three thousand pieces. How much? Three thousand. A couple of bucks. Yeah. Uh, and then they recreated the Seinfeld set. Yeah, and I, I saw a picture of it. George looks just like George. Oh, yeah. Well, you can get any of the uh, Lego guys to look like George. <laughs> just a little bit of hair on each side of it. I I mean, so you got all the characters. That's pretty On cool. Seinfeld and uh, Jerry's apartment. Yeah. I wonder if they have, you know, he's a, a huge Superman fanatic, Jerry okay. Seinfeld. Is. I didn't know that. Yeah, so there's a Superman in every episode. Yeah, it's just sitting on like the bookshelf or something. Really? Yeah. So I wonder if they worked it into the Lego. I, see, I'm I'm not a super huge fan of the show. I'll I watch know. it if I stumble on exactly. it. Exactly. And I'll laugh, fan. but I, I haven't sat down and watched every episode. Yeah. I just remember that was one of the little things that, that came out. Now of I'm going to have to look. To look for the sign of uh, the sign. The, the Superman. Superman. What is it? A picture? Is no, it a figure? No, it's a figurine and it's on the bookshelf that is behind the couch in his living room. Is it like an elf on the shelf thing? Only super. Superman style? Maybe so, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's pretty cool. But Lego 3,000 pieces. The Home Alone one. Yeah. Yeah. I I know that buying those for my kids when they were little, the boys loved Legos. Yeah, a couple bucks. They're super expensive. Yeah, a dime or two. And super hard on the feet in the middle of the Well, when you step on those puppies, (laughs) absolutely. Mornings with Rob and Liz. He's 52 years old. He's been a miner for a long time. He is really, he's looked for gemstones. He's Mm -hmm. looked for a lot of stuff. I'd call him Indiana Jones of 2020. Indiana Jims. Gems? Look at that. (laughs) Here she goes. Mom joke. The guy, actually, it was a good mom joke. It almost likened to dad joke. Yeah. It was so, so close, but mom (laughs) joke wins out. So he's 52. His name is Sananu. He's He's in Tanzanian. And he found a tanzanite, not one, but two. They are very rare gemstones. Mm -hmm. He sold them to the government Mm -hmm. for, wild guess how much? How big were they? They're big. Oh, they're just big. A couple hundred thousand dollars. Okay. I don't know. I have no idea. What if I told you that they were so big they were 13 pounds each? 13 pounds. Okay. How many now carrots give it enough. go into thirteen pounds? I don't know. I, um, okay, um, one million dollars. Okay, she's a lot closer now. It's three point four million. 
for two tanzanite? Yeah, the guy became a millionaire overnight. overnight. Literally, after finding those two gemstones. Were they like, I wonder, were they right beside each other? Did he mine them throughout the day? I think he tripped over him. He goes, what's this? <laughs> He's on a hike. He was what, just what, what happened? What's, what's, what's that? I doubt it. I'm sure he was out there mining for a long time. I wonder if this is probably the biggest he's ever found. Yeah. But I wonder if he's ever found he's anything. He's never made this before. Uh-uh. Somewhere close to this. Yeah. Tanzanite. That's beautiful, too. That stone, it's kind of a purpley blue. Oh, is it? I have oh. no idea. I'm colorblind, so I could not tell you. Oh, it would be right up my alley. But, oh, it would. Oh, yeah. Let me well, let me just chip a little bit. Three point four million, and it's yours. Well, I can't wear that on my hand. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> you could try. Thirteen pounds. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Do you think you've been spending more time with your kids during quarantine? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because we're going off. Our neighborhood pool is yeah. open. Not many neighborhood pools are. Ours is. And so we've been going off to the pool a lot. Yeah. It's, it's It's really, for me, it's gotten me a little bit closer to Eli, yeah. our youngest. And getting to know him a little bit better, I would think. Yeah, he's got quite the personality. Yeah. Cool. Well, a lot of dads are doing just the same thing. They are getting to know their kids because we're being forced, you know, especially there for a while. Man, it was shut down. You couldn't mm-hmm. go anywhere. Nothing was open. Okay. Kids and dads are getting closer than ever. In fact, um, Canadian Health Men's Health Foundation did a study, a couple of studies uh, and some surveys and found that like 56% of dads say they're closer to their kids than ever before because they were forced to not go to, you know, athletic events. They had to stay home from work. The kids are there. They're not going to school. And so they've also had to figure out ways to entertain them. That also entertain dad. (laughs) Yeah. And so they're playing catch in the backyard where maybe they didn't. It's it's nothing against the dads. Don't don't take it like that. It's just that they've been given the opportunity to have more time where they can get out and do those things. Well, listen, it's it's proven fact Mm -hmm. that a dad who is present in his child's life, Mm -hmm. the better that child is. Well, yeah. And more of a shot that they have without without the presence of dad in life. A lot of things just seem not to go right. Yeah. Of course. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, as far as this study goes, they're finding that um, dads are super thankful. In fact, a lot of dads are deciding, I'm just going to work at home from now on because it's been that good for their family and for them themselves as a parent because they didn't have that time you know dad mom and dad honestly work all day long they get home they're exhausted Mm -hmm. still got to put dinner on the table still got to do homework and all of that except for putting dinner on the table has been (laughs) pushed to the side Mm -hmm. all this time especially getting ready and making a long commute yeah that commute can just really wear you out at times too if you're doing half an hour each way an hour each way think of that now you're spending Spending that two hours with your kid. You know, Luke graduated this year. We would have thought this year we wouldn't have seen a whole lot of Luke with baseball games, with senior activities. True. Time we can never get back. And I thank God. I really thank God every day for that time. So there you go. That's right. Thank you, Quarantine, for bringing families together. Got to see the positive. His morning crew. I don't know if you're into gaming. Maybe somebody in your family is in the gaming, and if they're into the Sony PlayStation, it looks like there's good news when it comes to the PlayStation 5. And what is that good news? They're doubling production. Oh, wow. So there are going to be more that are out because people are really into these things. And I think because we've had to stay home so much, a lot of people are playing a lot of video games. They are. Yeah. You know, I'm grateful. My kids don't. They'd rather be outside. Yeah. That's and good. play, which is really good. I'm right. so curious if the under 30s, we have two producers, Ian <laughs> and TJ. Yeah. And we just mildly mentioned just a moment ago, PlayStation 5. And I hear this PS5 <laughs> off in the corner. So are you guys like, you're into this? Uh I've got a buddy that is, but I'm not willing to pay that price. Oh, it is expensive. That That's sounded true. like a, a friend of mine. Yeah. Asking for a friend. I'm pretty sure that the friend (laughs) has TJ visiting a lot playing (laughs) the Sony PlayStation. See, I play Xbox. I I don't go for PlayStation. And I play Nintendo, so neither of us are really the key demographic. But the system looks like a stormtrooper, so that's cool. Okay. (laughs) There's always a bright side with Ian. There you go. My boys are into it. Well, and I play the Atari, so I'm just old. Mornings with Rob and Liz. 
It is so cool going over some of these entries for Summer Fun Fridays, mm-hmm. which, by the way, after 8 o'clock, you'll find out who the winner is. But we've been reviewing some of the entries, which, by the way, it's a random selection, by the way. Oh, yeah, So yeah, we're yeah. not picking favorites or yeah. anything like that. Mm-hmm. But it's just really cool seeing some of the memories that people are sharing as they get involved with Summer Fun Fridays to win that Backyard Movie Kit. It's Robin Liz on his radio. Yeah, Crystal was one of those entries, and she said the best memory she has, and it continues to today is that she takes the kids swimming all summer long never get away from the pool basically and that's a great thing because you know they love going swimming they get to hang out all day with their friends and then they're worn out in the evening and they yeah. just fall out <laughs> nice evening of peace yeah. and quiet yep. by the way the picture that crystal sent her kids are out by the pool <laughs> eating a very nice snack of cheetos, cheetos. and i'm sure they share Mm-hmm. I'm looking at their fa- their sweet little faces, and I'm sure they share with each other, but they look like fun. And I'm sure that all the residue that's left behind on the Cheetos on the hands go right into the pool. Into the filter. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it should go. Yes. You're supposed to have fun in the summer. Okay, thank you for sending yeah. that in. By the way, what about you? If you would like to win that backyard movie kit mm-hmm. and a family adventure that goes along with it, which, by the way, that's the projector, the movie screen, the uh, the tabletop popcorn maker and the popcorn yeah. to go with it, it's easy to enter in. Yeah, and we have several more weeks that we're doing this, including coming up at 810, 800-447-7234. Text in the keyword SUMMER, and you can also go online to hisradio.com. Also, open the app. It's right there.